Hello guys, this is Chris Control Automation. I hope you are all doing well. I know it's been a while, almost two months since my last video upload. Yeah, it's due to one or two reasons. And I've got some great stuff planned for you, starting with today's video, which is about a conveyor sorting system. This video was requested by a subscriber, so I decided to start with this video for him. Thank you so much for your patience and continued support. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and also hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Let's dive into today's video. This is the question the subscriber sent to me. Number 1. When the start push button is pressed, the conveyor belt motor M should start running. Number 2. After a 5 minute delay, using the timer relay TR, contactor M1 should energize diverting the conveyor belt to a sorting section number three if the stop push button is pressed at any time the conveyor belt motor m should stop immediately number four when the conveyor belt motor m is stopped contactor m2 should energize allowing the conveyor belt to return to its initial position number five when the start push button is pressed again the cycle should repeat from step one so this is the diagram for the question. We have stop button, start button, M contactor, on delay timer relay, M1 contactor, relay 1, M2 contactor, and then limit switch relay, LSR. This is our limit switch, mechanical limit switch. I use the open side. Now, when the start button is pressed, contactor M would energize. At the same time, timer would also energize. When contactor M energizes, this close contact would open. When the timer also energizes, it starts counting. So after the preset time, this contact will close. Therefore, contactor M1 would energize and then the conveyor will start moving to the sorting section. As it says, after a 5 minute delay, using the timer relay TR, contactor M1 should energize, diverting the conveyor belt to a sorting section. As this M1 is energized, this side is closed and then this R1 is also energized. This is a hold on on the R1 to provide a hold on for this. Number three, if the stop push button is pressed at any time, the conveyor belt motor M should stop immediately. Number four, when the conveyor belt motor M is stopped, contactor M2 should energize, allowing the conveyor belt to return to its initial position. The question says, when we press on the stop button, contactor M should de-energize. At the same time, timer relay should also de-energize. When the timer de-energizes, this contact will open, de-energizing the M1 contactor. And at the same time, when this M contactor de-energizes, this contact comes back to its close position. And don't forget that this R1 is still energized through its hold-on contact, though this contactor is de-energized opening this contact but because of this hold on contact still the R1 is still energized so therefore this contact is also still closed so we have close 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 therefore can of flow through to energize M2 as the question said when the conveyor belt motor M is stopped when we de-energize this contactor contactor M2 should energize allowing the conveyor belt to return to its initial position so as this contactor is energize the conveyor is returning to its initial position now let's see something here we could see that at this point the question didn't say that when it get to its initial position someone will stop it so in this case i added a limit switch at the initial side and then this is the limit switch relay so as the conveyor is returning to its initial position when it get there and hit this limit switch it will close and then this relay will energize the moment this really energizes, this contact will open, de-energizing the M2 contactor. Therefore, the conveyor will stop. At the same time, this contact will also open, de-energizing this relay one to reset the system. So that when we press on the start button again, the cycle will repeat. The number five, if the start push button is pressed again, the cycle should repeat from step one. So this is the circuit diagram. Now we are going to use PLC, Semantic Manager, to design this circuit. And then you use Factory I.O. 3D Simulator to 
see how the operation will be. So let's get started. So this is the PLC representation of the control diagram. When we come to this session, we have stop button, start button, M contactor. So stop button, start button, M contactor. We have the timer, this one. We have this open contact in parallel with the start button. This is it. When you move to this session, we have open contact on the timer and then M1 contactor. So network two, we have the open contact on the timer and then the M1 contactor. When you come here, we have open contact on the M1 contactor, close contact on the LSR relay and then R1. So M1, which is open contact, LSR, which is close contact, and then R1. We have R1 open contact in power with the open contact on the M1. So that is it. When we come to the next line, we have open contact on the R1, close contact on M contactor, close contact on LSR, and then M2 contactor. So that is it. R1 open contact, M close contact, LSR close contact, and then M2. The last session, we have the lemma switch open contact and then LSR relay. So LS open contact, LSR relay. Now, someone will ask, why did I use open contact instead of close contact for the stop button? The reason is that since I am using a physical push button, which is normally close, the moment we turn on the PLC model, the, the normal close push button will send 24 volt to the PLC input. So that is why I use an open contact here. The moment it receives 24 volt, it will become normally close. So when you press on the stop button and then the 24 volt goes away, then it will become open. So we are going to open the 3D simulator. This is it, factory IO. So we come to new. This is our nice workshop. These are the components. We are going to use a conveyor. So we have ruler conveyors here. This is a turn table. We have belt conveyor here. So let's select this belt conveyor. You drag and drop. This is our belt conveyor. This is the motor, three phase motor. Now, we are going to put a product or item on the conveyor. So, we are going to select a box. Let's say this box, drag and drop. So, we are putting it on it. Now, it's on the conveyor. We are going to put a sensor. So you are picking this plate here. Then we select this sensor. It's a diffuse sensor. So okay. So we have placed it on it. Now you see that the arrow is pointing this this way instead of on the conveyor so we have to right click on this you select eon the plus okay so now it is pointing on the conveyor the red because the conveyor is going to operate in both forward and reverse direction we have to make it forward and reverse so configuration select digital plus or minus you can see that we have bed conveyor minus then move the, the box a bit in front okay bed conveyor minus and then we have bed conveyor plus this will be the forward contactor and then the minus will be the reverse contactor so we are going to select the start and stop push buttons pick our pillar here okay and then we take our panel Yes, so we mount the panel on the pillar. Okay, now we are going to select the 
start and stop buttons so we close this one so we come to file drivers or f4 we come here we select siemens s7 PL system this is the plc model this size is the input side this side is the output side so when you come to the ladder diagram we have three input the stop start and then the lemma switch they are the main input the stop button is i0.0 .0. so we select stop button we connect it at i0.0 the start button is i0.1 you come and select the start button i0.1 and then the element switch is i0.2 that is the diffuse sensor i0.2 now left with the output the output we are only going to connect only two output that is the forward contactor and then the reverse contactor m1 is the forward contactor and it is k0.1 so we come here belt conveyor plus this one is the forward contactor so you connect this one at k0.1 the reverse contactor is m2 which is k0.3 so belt conveyor minus is the reverse contactor you connect it at k0.3 so we come back to the plc model we select this side the plc system we select PL system MPI. Okay, we are going to download the program onto this PLC model. This is the PLC model, the software version or the simulator. So, in case you don't have the physical model, you can use this one equally. So, you click on download. Yes. 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 Okay, let's run it. It is now loading yes now it is in run mode you can minimize this let's go to the factory io we click connect it is now connected we come to the ladder diagram we click on the spectacle monitor you monitor it so now we are monitoring it we click on the play button on the simulator the factory io okay so now you see that this contact is showing green it means that 24 volt dc is at input address i0.0 .0 because the button you use the stop button it is already a close button this one it is the same as the physical push buttons that we have just yes, that this one is just a simulator but the same thing so now that is the close button it has sent 24 volt dc to the input address i0.0 that is why this contact is showing green so now it is closed look at this ones they are open the moment they also receive 24 volt dc they also close that is why i use an open contact here so we are going to start it but before that let's go to the question again the question says when the start push button is pressed the conveyor belt motor m should start running after a five minute delay using the timer relay TR, contactor M1 should energize, diverting the conveyor belt to a sorting section. If the stop push button is pressed at any time, the conveyor belt motor M should stop immediately. When the conveyor belt motor M is stopped, contactor M2 should energize, allowing the conveyor belt to return to its initial position. The moment you press on the start button, the timer will start counting. After the pressure time, the conveyor would start running, sending the box from this position to this position. So when it gets here, we then we press on the stop button and then it will reverse its direction. Then to come and end here, the moment it gets here, the sensor will sense it and stop it. So we have pressed on the start button. Let's see the circuit. You see the timer is counting. Four, three, two one let's see you see it is now moving so when you press on the stop button it will reverse you see that it has reversed when it gets here the sensor will sense it and then it will stop you see that so that is the 
operation of this diagram. So let's look at the question again. The question said, if the start push button is pressed again, the cycle should repeat from step one. So we are going to press the start button again. It will start going this direction. Now the timer is counting. You see that it is counting. So after the counting, it will start moving. You see that it is moving now. So when you press on the stop button, it will stop and it will reverse. You see that the moment it gets here, it stops. So we press again. The timer is counting. M is energized. Timer is also energized. The moment is finished counting, M1 will energize. Then that is the forward contactor. You see that that's energized. When you press on the stop button, it will reverse. When it gets here, it will stop. That is M2 is now energized. Now it has stopped. So this is the simple operation of the circuit diagram. If you want to understand how to do this PLC programming, please kindly go to my channel and then watch my videos on PLC programming. You know how to program all this. This will bring us to the end of today's video. If this is the first time you're watching this channel, I will urge you that you subscribe to this channel. Okay, and then you hit on the bell icon. You like the video, you share the video to your friends, and then you put down your comments. Let's meet in the next tutorials. Thank you.